The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Fritz Lang's epic science fiction film, Buntropolis. Yes. Let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, can you go at least one day without screwing everything up? To which I say, oh, crap, I just spilled all my coffee. Damn it. (laughs) People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I've been a loyal and essentially hardworking employee at my local bookstore for almost 17 years. Yes. If my work history was a person, especially a boy, oh my God, so much masturbation. (laughs) Just being honest, 17. I mean, come on. And as such, I really do have my fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my fingers against your face very creepily with... This week's installment of Notes from the Bookstore. And Dad? this week, uh, yes, Maxwell? Um, you guys need to. That will be the. It for Chelsea. It's time for people to go back. Oh my God. Okay, are you drunk, Maxwell? Are yes. you drunk? Okay, no. give me a kiss. No, like oh, I love you. Uh, and this week, Bunny. Yes. As we are wont to do from time to time here on Notes from the Bookstore, this week we are getting our uh, usual uh, plan, our usual format. Yes. And we're throwing it out of the window. All right. We will be having unfiltered, unscripted conversations about some various topics that are pertinent to your local bookstore and pertinent to me, the local bookseller. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one. Uh, homeless people. Homeless people. I don't care where your bookstore is. You have a problem with homeless people. That's what happens when you have comfy what? chairs and stuff like that. What if you have a homeless problem. What if your bookstore is a homeless person? <laughs> Come on, Eleanor. Uh, sorry, honey. What if your bookstore What if is... your bookstore is a homeless person? Yeah. What are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. This okay, is one gotcha. of those one-hand clapping things, isn't it? I at my last store, which was in Sacramento, California, we had a serious homeless problem because we were a few blocks away from the California State Fair. And during the very cold months of the year, they turned part of the California State Fairgrounds into a homeless shelter. So there were periods in time where you had to really be on your feet and go, "Okay, what do we do? About the man on crack who's throwing things. That doesn't sound like a homeless shelter, man. That sounds like a shanty town. No, it basically does become like a like a homeless shelter, shanty town, soup kitchen. Yeah. Suddenly, we're dealing with some really weird stuff. One guy came into the store, got out his sleeping bag, put it in front of the biography section, and fell asleep in the middle of the aisle <laughs> in our store. <laughs> I can't think of any other type of store where this would happen. You wouldn't see someone just putting a sleeping bag on the floor and falling asleep in a Best Buy I am... or a Bed Bath and Beyond or a Toys R Us. But bookstore, oh yeah, there you go. I I appreciate your interest in biology, but learning doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. So I was happy. What emerald? What Bella? Yes, I am wearing skinny jeans. They are emeralds. (laughs) Good for you. Is emerald there? 
Uh, yes, but she's in the living room watching oh. uh, Stonehenge Apocalypse. I am in the bedroom right now with Bella. I am wearing emerald skinny jeans. Emerald was going to throw away all of these clothes. And I'm like, first off, you shouldn't throw away clothes. We can donate them. We can give them to Goodwill. We can give them to something. You shouldn't just throw away clothes. Secondly, how stretchy are these skinny jeans of yours? I wonder if they'll fit me. So I tried them on and I'm like, holy crap, these skinny jeans fit perfectly on me. Emerald, these are my skinny jeans now. I own skinny jeans and they're mine. <laughs> Off topic, but it's okay. It's our podcast. So I have these skinny jeans and I wear them occasionally, but let me tell you something. Yeah. I am so pissed off at what clothing designers do to women. I am so upset. Every time I wear these jeans, I go, I become a feminist every time I wear these jeans because women should be allowed to have fricking pockets. <laughs> the pockets are so tiny. They're tiny little pockets. And I'm apparently used to always having my hands in my pockets or keeping my keys in there and my phone, but I have no pockets, a men's pants. I have some well, pockets that go down to my freaking knees. It's a conspiracy. It okay. is. It's designed. It 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 it's a protection for rapists. It's it's a protection for rapists. Yes, yes. Because sh- what do you teach women about fighting rapists? You use your car keys. Yes. And then you don't give them fucking pockets. Yeah. I don't see why women are not allowed to have pockets. I'm so upset at this. I'm so upset. On the positive side, though, my you got to start digging through a purse. Yeah, before your rape. Yeah, I carry. I apparently carry so much stuff in my pockets, and I don't realize it until I wear these skinny jeans, and suddenly I have to carry everything. Yes, it's like, damn, I'm gonna buy myself a purse so I can yeah. we'll have that whenever I wear my skinny jeans. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. my eyes turn on stuff in my purse. Yeah. So anyway, homeless people, I thought that when I went from a store in California to a store in Oklahoma, that the homeless problem wouldn't be around. And it sure does seem like we don't have a lot of homeless people in the store. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I won't have to worry about homeless people anymore or crazy people yelling or throwing things or finding hypodermic needles in the bathroom. This will be good for me. But then the other day I go to throw out the trash in the morning, as I do every morning. And God damn it, right by the, the trash bin is uh, two blankets covered in blood and a pillow. <laughs> and see, mad. see, I'm I'm gonna, why, why did that? Why did that kick off the laugh response? <laughs> I have no I, I, There's something about blanket covered in blood that's just hilarious. Oh, man, that 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 ties in with my glitter force revulsion. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, I've got an encampment now. Yeah. It's so pissed off. But still, at least this is nowhere near the problems that I had. So then the managers of the bookstore are all like, if you throw out, if you go outside at all, if you throw out any trash, you need to have the buddy system. You need to call the manager immediately and they'll walk out there with you. And I'm like, okay. Maybe that might be nice for like a 18 year old cafe person. But just to let you know, I'm a 40 year old who has had a lot of experience with homeless people. All I need is a box cutter and my dreams. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can handle myself. I have dealt with homeless people. Yes. I can be as crazy as them. And that repels them. (laughs) That's what you got to do. You can't speak. Uh, you can't try and reason with a crazy homeless person. Yeah. You just have to be as crazy, if not crazier, than them, and then they'll freak the fuck out. <laughs> so yeah. How so do you have an example? <laughs> uh, nothing that comes to the top of my mind. But yeah, homeless problem. Every store deals it with this in one way or another. Just yeah. FYI. Uh. And uh, here's another uh, unfiltered, unscripted topic. Farm boy veteran. Farm boy veteran. Farm boy freaking 
veteran. I have been waiting to talk about this until a period in time in which I had space and yeah. time to talk about my various emotions regarding this. But here on the podcast, we have talked at length about the fact that I share my job with a second receiving manager whom I have dubbed, dubbed farm boy veteran because he is literally a, a six foot, a million blonde haired, blue eyed, uh, white Christian veteran who grew up on a farm and he's impossible to hate. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it, we, he was going on a two week vacation to New Zealand he was getting two weeks of vacation time. Right. And right before he left, he came in and dropped off a letter that was informing the managers that he was giving his two weeks notice and that he was quitting. So farm boy veteran no longer works uh, with me at the bookstore. And now I am the only receiving manager. There's a part of me that is very happy about this. It's like, okay, my manager, when I got my last um, performance evaluation, the manager said that the one thing holding you back, Steve, is that you're not really owning the receiving area. You're not really owning it. You're not really commanding it. This is your section and you need to really be responsible. And I'm like, yes, but you have to see this from my point of view. I can work here for a year, a year and a half, two years. And at any point in time, a farm boy veteran can appear and say, hey, look at my department, which is mine. Yeah. You know, that hangs over my head Mm -hmm. that at any second he can come back and I have to share all of this with him. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I there's a part of me that is being held back from owning this department so much because I literally have joint custody of this entire area. <laughs> the man in a field in Afghanistan. Yeah. So that is really holding me back. So there's a part of me that's happy because, hey, now I can finally own the section and it's mine and I can I, I can really own it and I can be a better employee and yada, yada, yada. There's another part that's like, it is Christmas. We are going to be getting Christmas stuff. We The holidays are literally right behind us, waiting to pounce. We are going to be, it's going to be Black Friday in literally a second. Yes. It's going to be Christmas and everything is going to be piling on top of me. And the closer we got to the holidays, the more I was thinking it's going to be OK. I have backup. Yes. I have someone who is coming to help me out. And now that person is gone. Yeah. You know, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. There was also the feeling of of like, I still have so much vacation time. So much vacation time that's going to expire at the end of October, but I just can't take it because there's no one to cover for me. So I kept thinking he's coming in September. And once he comes in September, I will finally be able to take vacation time and I will be able to call in sick, which I'm never allowed to do. And I will be able to do all of these things because I'll have someone to back me up. And now he's gone and I have nothing. (laughs) But then there was a part then there was a part that was like, oh, this is going to be uncomfortable because he's coming into the store to give us two week notice and he's probably going to say goodbye to me. And that's going to be awkward. He did yeah. not say goodbye. To me. He did not say goodbye to me. And I have surprisingly mixed emotions about that. Yeah. Cause there was there. Cause I kept saying, he's going to say goodbye to me. That's going to be so awkward. And then he didn't say goodbye to me. So now I'm like, why didn't he say goodbye to me? <laughs> that wasn't very Christianly of him. That bitch. Yeah. How dare he not say goodbye to me? I've just been warming this section for you. And you just quit without saying a word? Yeah. Where do you get off? My safe word is whiskey. I'm sorry. Wait, what's going on? Uh, it... There was a serious pastry issue happening. Oh, serious. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. It could have been. A, it was a potential. It was a near miss pastry a catastrophe. Uh, it was a potential pastry issue. 
Yes. It was a PPI. Yes. Gotcha. You can just say PPI. I understand. PPI. Cool. Yeah. You so, kids these um, days. <laughs> so, uh, before we end notes from the bookstore this week, which is definitely going to be a lot shorter than last week, I wanted to talk about a specific author. Okay. And this is going to be weird because this will be the first time I think I have ever talked about this author before. Okay. She is a New York Times bestselling author. Of course, now those of you who listen to notes from the bookstore know that that means nothing. Yes. But she is a New York Times bestselling author. Her name is Sue Grafton. Okay. She is a mystery writer. And you might know her from her Kingsley Milhone series of mystery books. Okay. That's the one that all the kids are talking about. Of course. I, yeah. In fact, in fact, here, here, here are the 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 names of the books in the Kingsley Milhone series. She wrote A is for Alibi, B is for Burglar, C is for Corpse, D is for Deadbeat, E is for Evidence, F is for Fugitive, G is for Gumshoe, H is for Homicide, I is for Innocent, J is for Judgment, K is for Killer, L is for Lawless. <gasps> M is for Malice, N is for News, O is for Outlaw, P is for Peril, Q is for Quarry, R is for Ricochet, S is for Silence, T is for Trespass, U is for Undertow, V is for Vengeance, W is for Wasted, X was just X, and now she has a new book called Y is for Yesterday. We are almost there! (laughs) What the hell is she going to do? Are those literally the names of her books? Yes, those are the names of her books. She's been doing this for freaking forever. I am at one point annoyed by it. And another point, why hasn't that been done before? I don't know, but there's like, you go, oh, that's so annoying. At the same time, it's impressive as hell. Like, I hate to say this, but like, damn. Hats off to you, Sue Grafton. Never thought you'd get here, but you have gotten <laughs> here. We are at Y is for yesterday. Holy crap. Yeah. Never thought you'd get there. I'm kind of excited to find out what Z is for. Yeah. Zephyr. Yeah. Z is for Zisu. Yeah. I mean, we barely even need Z as a letter. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Even fucking xylophone is an X. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta suck. But yeah, no. We she just released she just released Why is for yesterday. So we're almost there. Yeah. Genie Genie is putting out pizza. So what? my Genie has mentioned pizza, so Maybe I was rash in kicking the letter Z out of the alphabet. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Because yeah. it's a valid point. Yeah. Because without Z, it would be Pia. Yeah. And Pia is one of Pia is one of the aliens from the Santa uh-huh. Claus Conquers the Martian. That is correct. But yeah, Sue Grafton is almost at Z. Who was I like who grew up to be hot as hell and annoying as shit at the same time. Yes, we're talking about Pia Zadora and not uh, Sue Grafton, just to be clear. (laughs) We we have switched a little bit because Sue Grafton is a is a a very old woman. Yeah. Just want to be clear about that. I'd like to think. In my mind, this is kind of a messed up thought to have, but in my mind, what I see is I see her dying about two days before Z comes out. (laughs) Charles Schultz style. She cannot live without this series, so she writes the last one, and then that's what I see happening in my mind. And she has to die under mysterious circumstances. Yeah. And then it would be like the missing Z book. Yeah. That's like legendary. 
Yeah, she can't live without her series. Yes. That's what I see in my in my mind's eye or whatever. Yes. It will be remembered with Nicholas Nickaby. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is it from Notes from the Bookstore this week. Next week, it'll probably be longer. And remember, boys and girls, and then there's Maud. You, yep. you, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases, and all you have to do is explain in a convincing way why Ginger Fuggo Ed Sheeran is attractive. That's all you have to do. Okay, I... Ginger Fuggo musician Ed Sheeran. Explain how he is attractive, and if you do that successfully, you can get 10% on all of your purchases. It's that simple. Okay. Or that difficult. Because he's a weird-looking dude. And apparently <laughs> he Game of Thrones episodes. I'm not exactly sure how. Yeah. Not exactly sure how. <laughs>